What's up everybody, I'm Clay from RED and you're back with another RED Tech. Today we're talking about V-Raptor's amazing sensor technology and how you can get the most out of your chip. V-Raptor had a lot of thought put into its functionality as well as its interactions with other bits of kit. And let's be honest, the biggest decision you make besides which camera is usually which lens. Is it spherical or anamorphic? Is it VistaVision full frame? Is it S35? From 8K down to 2K, we're gonna help you get your format sorted. Speaking of lower resolutions, unlike with other cameras that have a lower overall resolution, when you crop in on the sensor with V-Raptor to S35, you're still at 6K if you wanted to pan and scan, or if you're just looking for the benefits of super sampling for a 4K finish. And this is the type of multi-format thinking we're trying to get everybody to really acknowledge because it opens up a lot of possibilities. Say you wanted to pull a vintage 16 millimeter lens out and use that because it has a coating that you love. You could change to 3K and 16 millimeter mode and then you're reducing the amount of pixels you scan so you get crazy high frame rates on top of it. It's really kind of a win-win. How about this? We're gonna look at a sampling of modes and we're gonna talk about how they relate to some of my absolute favorite lenses. Then we're gonna put some lenses on the camera and talk about my lens choices and how they relate to the sensor usage. V-Raptor has a 46.31 millimeter diagonal sensor. This means that only full frame or VistaVision lenses cover the full sensor at 8K. This is where we pull out our 50 millimeter. It helps explain the difference you get going between VistaVision and S35 mode. Okay, see here we have a nice image. It's framed just the way I want it. This lens is designed to cover the full sensor at VV. It's a 50 mil. But if we switch into S35 mode, you'll see my field of view changes. This is because we're windowing in on the sensor. If I wanna match my field of view from before, I'll need to put on a wider lens. Here we go, let's throw on this 35 millimeter. Now you can see that we're back close to the field of view that we had before. So the anamorphic format was invented for tank periscopes in the First World War. It was a really clever way to get a wider field of view from the same relative lens area. They achieved this by making a precisely warped lens that squeezes the light in, packing information into a more vertical area. Then, a separate inverted lens de-squeezed the image. This resulted in a beautifully charactered image that has a lot wider field of view, but maintains the background compression and top to bottom view of a spherical counterpart. All right, now back to the modern world with V-Raptor. It has anamorphic modes that have you covered no matter what your D-squeeze ratio. Let's look at this anamorphic from Atlas. This is a 40 mil 2X. With a full frame expander, we select 2X mode in 8K, and we see the nice anamorphic image that we've come to expect. Now, let's remove that expander and remember that this lens was designed for S35 anamorphic. Notice how in 8K, we're no longer covering the full sensor. Now we need to pop into S35 mode and we'll be covered properly. See, anamorphic ain't that hard. Basically the camera does everything for you. You just need to read the lens and select the corresponding mode. So let's say you wanna shoot like crazy high frame rates, like max out as much as you can. So the less amount of sensor that the camera has to scan, the higher frames per second. The higher frames per second, the slower it's gonna play back. And so with that, the less amount of sensor that you're scanning, that means the less amount of sensor you're using. So you don't need some lens with a huge image circle like VistaVision. So in this circumstance, I would actually want a really wide lens that's built for S35, like this 25 mil from Atlas. Another super important thing to think about with high-speed cinematography are your light sources. Because of the way that most household electronics work, you won't be able to point just any light at a scene for a 400 frames per second shot. If you didn't know, your light bulb is probably lying to you. You think it's just on when you flip the switch, but the truth is that it's rapidly flickering off and on all the time. Your petty human eyes just can't tell. This is called refresh rate, and most lights made for filming don't do this. But common household electronics and street lights certainly will. If your shutter speed is not synced with the lights in frame, you'll see pretty gross strobing. You can hunt around in the shutter speeds, but it can be difficult to get a good synchronization depending on the source. 
One easy tip to help is that most household electronics in the US are on a 160th refresh rate and UK and Europe are often on 150th, meaning that you can stick to an integration time based on multiples of 60 and 50 respectively to help ease this strobe. There are also some fixes for post if flicker is unavoidable, but you know what they say about fixing it in post. All right, now for a recap. V-Raptor is the most versatile multi-format sensor on the market right now. You've got anamorphic modes, you can do full frame vista vision, S35, S16, all at crazy high frame rates that only get higher as you window in on the sensor. You have tons of lens choices that you can make through the adaptable RF mount, and you have 17 plus stops of dynamic range. This isn't the first all-in-one camera that RED's made, but damn, I think it's the best one yet. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, post, and subscribe, and keep creating.